Hello YouTube. Today is um, 6.21.16 and this is my oscillating switch idea. So um, what we have here is um, we have two coils and they're connected to a battery, both of them. And uh, in between them there's an iron, iron rod right here. This is an iron, an iron rod. So what happens is um, uh, the iron rod is what actually completes the circuit. So when uh, both both of these uh, coils are uh, are uh, connected to the positive, and then um, what happens is uh, if if this rod touches this this side, uh, it completes the the circuit on on the right side. So now this this circuit is connected to the ground, and so um, it ends up attracting the the metal rod backwards. And uh, once it, it, it attracts it backwards, it ends up completing the circuit on the left side. So now it's attracted back and forth. And what you get is a rapid back and forth um, oscillation of the iron rod. So it's basically like a, like a bell um, circuit, but uh, bell uh, actually um, only has one coil. And um, what makes it, uh, it, what limits how fast it goes is gravity. But here's, since we have two coils here, it should oscillate a lot faster. And hopefully we can use the back EMF uh, for something. So what we have here is we have two coils. I 3D printed the, um, uh, I didn't wind these coils, so that's how they, how they, how they are on the spools. Um, I get them from Adaptive uh, Engineering. AdaptiveEngineering.com, I suppose. I actually bought these from eBay. But uh, what I'll, uh, I like these kind of coils because they actually have the beginning of the wind and the end. So you don't have to wind your own coils. You can just use their own spools. And I 3D printed these uh, spacers for um, my, um, my core. And um, so um, and we have an, an iron piece as the, as the core. And, uh, and here's our um, uh, iron iron piece is going to be moving back and forth. It's just all-purpose galvanized wire, and this is not this is a spool holder that I 3D printed. It has a little slots in the middle for the zip ties to go into. So it's it's basically really simple. Um, I'm just I, I just want to show you guys and document the beginning of this project. Oh well, well, let's see if it works and if uh, let's see if we can use it for anything useful. The uh, vibrating switches are um, important for all kinds of things. Uh, if you're working with back EMF, you know, you you can use reed switches to pulse your um, coils or your your motors. But uh, this is just another way of doing it. And um, so anyway, stay stay tuned, you guys. So here's my oscillating uh, circuit buzzing. I'm gonna turn it off so you guys can hear me better. Okay, so there's the switch for the negative, and um, I had to update the schematic a little bit. So I ended what I ended up doing is I ended up putting two capacitors right there, and um, they're 200 volt, 820 microfarads. And um, they're right here. Without these capacitors there, for some reason, the circuit doesn't want to work properly. So, I mean, uh, and um, the load is connected to one of the coils, and the, the other side of it is connected to ground. And uh, I actually have, I connect, disconnect the load, the ground from the middle of the capacitors, and they speed up drastically if you connect the ground there. And... Um, if you connect the, them to to the load, the load uh, shines brighter. If you connect this side to the load, so that's that's what I that's what this lead is. It's um it's a lead that goes between the capa the capacitors. And um, so that's pretty much it, you guys. What um, ends up holding the leads to the end is little ceramic magnets because I couldn't figure out how to attach the leads to the metal rod. So okay, I'm gonna show you guys this thing vibrating again. And as you can see, as as uh, I'm ca capturing the back EMF from one of the coils, so we do have some lights. 
not a lot of light, but it's the light increases if we uh, hook up the uh, capacitors to them. So let's see. Okay, so I ended up hooking up the ground to one uh, one lead and the uh, um, between the capacitors on the other on the other lead, and I'll show you some anomalous reading readings in the voltmeter. It, it won't even be able to detect the right voltage, as you, as you can see. Okay, so I put it on DC. See, it's, it just spikes. It's actually way higher than what was showing. The, the problem with this back EMF technology is that our um, voltmeters just aren't designed to, to detect those kind of spikes. It just, it just freaks out. And on AC, Again, it's also going to freak out. This is, this is AC now. So what I ended up doing is I ended up uh, hooking up two microwave transformers to the circuit. So it goes from the power source to this transformer and then into the coil. And also from the power source to this transformer and into this coil. And uh, so... Uh, and what determines what side of the circuit is uh, active is this uh, metal uh, wire. So that part is the same. And the other thing that I changed was I, uh, I ended up connecting the, the load uh, right here. I'll show you. See, before it was connected right here. Now I connected it uh, right right here. So it's, it's between the ground and the middle of these two capacitors. Okay, so let's uh, let's run it and see how, how it works now. So the transformers are just there to boost up the inductance of the system. That's why I put the transformers there. The uh, I just hooked them up to the low vo uh, voltage side. High, high high voltage side is just empty, so they're just uh, uh, serve as large inductors. Okay, here we go. As you can see, we have usable light now, basically. This is a 120 volt, um, 3 watt uh, light bulb. So, um, notice what happens if we bypass the light bulb. So, I'm just going to uh, disconnect it and connect the two wires together. N notice, uh, notice the speed of this device. Okay, as you can see, now it's going in overdrive. I got rid of the, the lights, the load. Um, another thing that I noticed, if um, you disconnect the, the load and um, there's actually voltage going between the, the washer and 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 um, and this 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 lead over here. So I, I had I had my hand on, on top of the washer, and um, when I was touching that lead, I actually got zapped. Okay. In order to demonstrate how powerful this uh, voltage is between this washer and um, the uh, the ground the uh, ground connection, when the device is running. Uh, I'm going. To, I'm going to use this light bulb to demonstrate. So I'll be. I'll be touching the other lead to the washer, like this. I mean the dryer, and then we're, this thing should light up. As you can see, uh, right now there's no voltage. I, I, uh, this is just a regular dryer. It's. It's not. Um, and it, it has rubber feet on it as well. So. Yeah, so as you can see, there's no voltage right now. Okay, no voltage right now. Okay, so let's turn it on. This is this is extremely unusual. I've never seen this before. Okay, so it's running. One lead is connected to the ground. Negative connection on my um, power supply. Let's see what's going on here. Okay.
what's going on here you guys look all I'm doing is I'm touching this uh, my washer So now the circuit has two ground connect, two uh, ground connections. This um, this this dryer is actually another ground. It can be used as another ground because it has a lot of metal in it. Okay, now I'm going to turn it off and we're going to try again. As you can see, it's gone. Oh, it's just gone. So, uh, again, my power supply was uh, this Nokia um, 5.9 volts, 400 million power supply that I always use in all the videos. So that, that, that's going to be hard to explain what's going on here, why are we getting such a uh, huge voltage um, from between this dryer and the ground, and house ground connection. So it was just hooked up to house ground over there. Okay YouTube, here I'm going to uh, try to pulse this 13 watt uh, fluorescent light bulb with this circuit. So here we go. As you can see, it is pulsing. Anyway, you guys, I'm gonna keep experimenting and I'll post if I find anything interesting.